Hi there. The other week I was asked to play All Things Bright and Beautiful at a funeral and I came up with this simple arrangement on the guitar that I thought I'd show you. If you're getting into finger picking this is a, a nice one to play, not too hard and you can find the tablature for it on my website. Um, I've written it out in tablature like I say. I haven't put any chord symbols above the, the bars because I actually think that's sometimes misleading. Very often when you're doing finger picking you only need partial chords so I'll show you the shapes as we go and then I'm sure you'll be fine. Um, first of all, a bit of general stuff about the, the right hand. Generally, I use my thumb on the E, the A and the D strings, the, the lowest three strings, lowest pitched three strings, I should say. First finger on the G string, second finger on the B, third finger on the high pitched E string. And I'm doing what we call free strokes where you pluck the strings and rise up uh, above them once you play them, not kind of classical guitar rest strokes. In the uh, first bar, now I said to you earlier that I'm not going to talk about chord shapes as such, but basically it's a G to a C. Essentially, you only need the third finger behind the third fret of the bass E string and the little finger behind the third fret of the treble E string. That's all you need for the first half of the bar. Uh, you pinch the two E strings, play the G string afterwards, then you pinch the B and the D strings, and play the G string again. And you count this bar one and two and three and four and like eight quavers if you like. So that is like this, first half, okay? I mean, if you end up putting your second finger on the A string, that's fine, you might feel uh, more comfortable holding down a familiar shape like G, but you know, it's entirely up to you. So, and then you change to a C chord, and here you do need all three fingers of the C chord. So first finger behind the first fret of the B, second finger behind the second fret of the D, third finger behind the third fret of the A, and you pinch the B and A strings together, play the open G afterwards, then pinch the high pitched E and the D string together, and again the open G. So the open G follows everything, uh, no matter what the shape is. So this is your first bar. So you hear the tune, all things bright and... And obviously the open Gs are kind of filler notes so that it's not too empty. I should mention that when I played this at the funeral, I put the capo on the third fret, uh, putting the uh, hymn into the key of B flat major, which is a nicer key for both ladies and for men to sing. Very often, I don't know about you, but I've been at funerals where you know, I'm sort of screeching at the top of my range this is nice and comfortable, but anyway, this is this is a bit low in G, but you know, it's it's nice to just to show you how to play it, and you can always capo it wherever you feel comfortable. So there's your first bar. Now in the next bar, we start off with what is essentially a G with an added D. It's uh, third finger where it was at the beginning of the first bar, little finger behind the third fret of the B. Now you pinch the B and the low E string and keep those fingers on as you run up through the open D and the open G. And then let the B string go open, you can take your shape off there if you like. Essentially the second half of the bar is a kind of E minor. You only need the second finger behind the second fret of the D and you play the G and the low E string together then the D string, then the B string. So it's... Notice that is counted one and two and three and four. Let's put those first two bars together. Obviously when you're picking like this, it's a very severe examination of your uh, guitar playing, your accuracy, particularly with your left hand and you probably have to arch and press just a little bit more carefully than you would perhaps if you were just strumming. Now we have a little bit of a strange bar. Now we start off with two thirds of an A major shape. We have first finger behind the second fret of the D, second finger behind the second fret of the G, and I strum these three strings, the A, the D and the G, like that. Leave that shape on, Put my third finger behind the second fret of the E string, like that. So you've basically got an A7 uh, with an added sixth, like that. Which is 
quite an interesting sound, isn't it? Just let your thumb ripple through the A, D, G, B and E strings. And then you lift your third finger up and sound the open E. So it all crotchets this bar. Okay? One, two, three, four, and then we have... Now, again, crotchets in the fourth bar, last bar of this first section of tablature. We have third fret of the B, fourth fret of the D, first fret of the B, second fret of the D to just move down. And if you want to slow it down, that's quite nice. And then you move over to the G and the A strings. Fourth fret of the G, fifth fret of the A, I use fingers one and two on that. In fact, I use fingers one and two on all these shapes. And that moves down two frets to frets two and three. And slurring is nicer, I think. So just four pinches. When I say pinch, obviously I mean play one or more strings at the same time. So it'll be thumb and second finger, and then thumb and first finger. Let's play our first four bars, shall we? And then we've got some repeats. Now five and six almost the same as one and two, except in bar six we play open E string on the fourth bit of the bar and the open B as we did at the end of bar two. And then we have bar number seven. Quite an interesting bar. Starts off like a, a G chord. So we have our third finger behind the third fret of the bass E, little finger behind the third fret of the B string. Pinch those two strings, play the open D, and then bring the little finger over to the high pitched E string third fret. And then take that shape off and we have a couple of quite interesting little chords. That one and that one. So this one is a kind of a um, like an A9 with a C sharp bass. If you're interested in these things, if you're not, don't worry, just play what it is. It's first thing behind the second fret the D, third thing behind the fourth fret of the A, and you let your thumb ripple through those four strings, A, D, G, B. And then you make a new shape. This is kind of a D7. Uh, so you've basically got a C note there. That's your seventh of your D, if you like. So you've got third fret of the A, second finger, fourth fret of the D, third finger, second fret of the G, first finger. And again, let your thumb ripple through those three strings. Or you could, of course, pinch thumb one, two, like that. So... Make sure on those strummed chords that you don't go further than you should. So B string there, G string there, because the last string that you play is the melody note, gives you the melody note. And now bar eight, last bar of the chorus. So um, this bar number eight. Okay, again, it's your old friend, third finger, third fret, bass E string. Pinch the G and the E strings, then play the open D, then the open G, and then put your second finger behind the second fret of the G, to give you a kind of a G added second. Play that G string, so you get the G string twice in a row there, and then two open Bs. And keep your third finger on. This is what the tablature doesn't really tell you. The third finger is kept on all the way through that bar. And it's four quavers, two crotchets, counted one and two and three, four. So that's our first eight bars, that's our chorus. Obviously it's important to kind of accentuate the notes that are giving you the, the melody, the tune, make those stand out and uh, push the other notes into the background so you get kind of a, a tune and an accompaniment, albeit on the same instrument. Now bar nine is the start of the verse and basically here you need a D chord, a D major shape. If you're not sure of that, first finger, second fret of the G, third finger, third fret of the B. You actually don't need the second finger on the high pitched E string, but if you want to put it on to make yourself feel more comfortable, 
then please do, but you don't actually need it. So that's this bar. Now you start by playing G, the strings G, D, B, D. Like that. With that D major shape on. And now you turn it into what is essentially um, an A7 sus4 going to an A7. Now you don't need the first finger behind the second fret of the D. That would be an A7 sus4, wouldn't it? Third fret of the B, second fret of the D. I actually do put my finger there because I just think it actually rings nicer if you do that. But though you don't actually need that first finger on the D string because you're not playing it. And you pick the B and the A string, followed by the open G, and then the B and the A string, followed by the open G again. But the second time you pick the B and the A string, it's essentially an A7. It goes from the third fret of the B to the second fret of the B. So you go. In actual fact, all you need is like that, but I put my first finger on the D string to make me think of it as an A7, so I to A7. Like I say, this is what the tablature doesn't tell you. So, and then in bar 10, very much a D major again. Again, you don't need the second finger, but you can put it on if you like. This is what you pick. Now, obviously here you want, that's your tune, and the rest is kind of filler. So you pick the B and the D strings, pinch those together, G string, B string, G string, and then the B and the D together, and then open B. If you're just using the fingers you need, you'll end up with just your first finger behind the second fret of the G. So first two bars of the verse. One and two and three and four and one and two and three four. And then bar eleven is the same as nine. And then bar twelve we do this. And there's a, a nice changing chord there, a linking chord to the next bar. Bar 12 again starts with what is essentially a D chord. And we pick B and D together, G string, B string. And then we lift our second finger up to get open E if we've got it on. If you haven't, there's no problem. And then you actually put it on the second fret or behind the second fret of the E string, thus completing your D major shape. So that will look like this. At that point, lose the D shape, the D major shape, and we're going to do this is essentially a B7 chord. Left hand wise we've got 2nd fret of the A, 4th fret of the B, uh, kind of one of these upside down shapes, arching and pressing. Don't forget to get your fingers close to the frets without putting the fingers on the frets. And you pinch the uh, B and A strings. Like that. So that is 1 and 2 and 3, 4. Like that. Now, you don't need any shape on for this at all. I mean, essentially it is an E minor to an E minor ninth to an E minor, but you know, again, chord shapes here would be misleading. So just play what's written. Uh, you don't need anything left hand wise. Pinch the two E strings together, G string, B string. Then you want second fret of the E, third fret of the E, two notes side by side on the same string. In fact, three notes because you then need open E. So. It's Okay, let's play 12 and 13. Like that. Uh, and then we're going to play an A7 chord. Um, now, what I would suggest here, first finger behind the second fret of the D, third finger behind the second fret of the B, uh, strum A, D, G, B, and the middle four strings. Like that. And then you need one of these G chords with a slight change. So probably little finger third fret of the B, second finger second fret of the A, third finger third fret of the low pitched E string, and then strum E, A, D, G, and B, and then lift your little finger off the B string, play the B string open. So. Now in bar 15, I mean, 
Yes, it is a D major, but you actually only need the first finger on to get those first four notes. And you're picking uh, G, D, G, B, and then basically an A7 shape. First finger, second fret the D, third finger, second fret the B, or second finger if you prefer. And you pick these strings, the B and the A together, followed by open G, and then the E, the high pitched E, and the D together, followed by open G. So that's. So that bar is. And then bar 16 is your old friend uh, that you did in bar number 4. Those pinches all the way down in uh, crotches. And then repeat your chorus. So let's play the verse all the way through. I'll play the open B at the end of bar eight to lead you in. So let's play it all the way through. I'll do chorus, verse, chorus, uh, like this, and then I'll capo it and I'll do it again. And when you want to finish it, I mean, probably just go uh, play bar eight and end with the first of the open Bs and slow down. Now I'm going to put the capo on the, or behind the third fret, and I think it sounds nicer in B flat, a little a bit higher pitched. Let's have a listen. Definitely gives it a bit more definition as you raise the pitch. So there we have a nice, fairly simple finger picking version of all things bright and beautiful. These things, these hymns always sound a lot better if they're picked. Strumming on this kind of a, a song is generally pretty horrible. I think this sounds nice without being too difficult for you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and if you click that bell icon, you'll get a notification every time I upload something to YouTube. Uh, if you have any questions, do get in touch with me and you'll see me in my next video.